In this short technical presentation, we'll be looking at model states and how to integrate that within iLogic. So first off, we see we've got the 3D annotation here on screen. Now this is so we can just keep track for this presentation. We create a model state within Inventor and we can rename this model state to whatever you like. In this instance, we're just going to use the part number. Now once we've created this model state, we just need to activate that. Now any changes we make to this specific part will just be independent and be in this model state only. So we we'll change things like the part number, stop number and the description. And this should then update on our 3D annotation design. Now this is really important if you want to utilize model states for things like bill of materials and drones etc. We then change the value of our pattern within that part to 21 to match all that information we've just added to the eye properties. Now we can cycle through the model states and just check that all of the information we've added works correctly. And when happy with that, we can now go through and add all of these model states within the application. But this can be a bit tedious and laborious task. So we can use Excel now to quick and easily use that functionality to create all the component design intent and also the part numbers we require for our model states. As you can see, some of the values have incremented, but we just need to go back through those values and update things like the description and the part number, etc. So now we press save, jump back into Inventor, and you'll see that all the model states now have updated to represent our Excel sheet. So I hope you agree, very quick and very easy way to implement different model states and different designs within your part model. So the next part of the presentation, we're gonna be looking at iLogic and we'll start off within the parameters dialog box. I'm gonna just create a parameter called part number. And this part number parameter is gonna be referenced within our iLogic code. And this is gonna be a multi-value. And the multi-value in this instance is going to represent the same as my model state part number. We're only going to add one because I want to show you a little trick that you can do with inside iLogic to add multiple values just from a code line. So let's jump straight into iLogic and you'll see that I've commented out two lines here. Now you can pause the screen and just take a note of what this is, but it's a multi-line and it's going to create these multi-values within the parameter called part number. Okay, so we'll save and run this code and with inside the parameters now, if we have a look at this part number we've just created, you can see that all of those parts are now created from one line of code. Next up, we're just going to use our logic now to be able to select our different designs. Quite easily, we just need to say select case. In this instance, it's going to be the part number that we've just created. We're now going to specify the case and this is going to be the part number and then we're gonna use the snippets on the left hand side here to select the correct line of code to activate that specific model state. Okay, once we've done that, it's gonna be in this document, activate this model state, and we're gonna type in that part number. And this is gonna be a deliberate mistake, so your keen inventor users will know what I've done wrong here. And then it's really important at this stage that we end this select, so we end this case, we tell in the code that that's the end of the function. And there's the error. Okay, so um, what I've done, I didn't rename my master model state. So it's very important to keep track of everything you do. So this is just gonna be master. And we can go back to the code now and we'll just copy and paste this line down. We're happy that works. Making the modifications just to the case and the actual uh, model state we want wishing to reference. We can then quick and easily go into our parameters dialog box and from our multi-value list, select which model state we wish to pick. So let's now take it one step further and have a look at creating a form for our selection. Using some of the toolbox tools to create an image and also dragging our parameter to select. Now this is just one parameter, you can do this with multiple designs. You can even do this within an assembly model. Find a suitable photograph. And as you can see now, we can just drop down this model and 
select whichever design we require. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for joining.